Starfleet Underground. Every week, we'll take a look at the latest Star Trek news and then check out a current or classic episode of Star Trek. This week, red eyes are evil. Brother and sister combos are dangerous to 3D chess. Can Saturday morning cartoons make your dot a baby's daddy? How did the airlocks get to suck so fast? Somebody starts talking about Star Trek 3, and we don't ever write any of our scripts, especially not this opening tease. Welcome back, everybody. This is Starfleet Underground, where our warp engines are always online. Our show is being brought to you by, of course, Section 31. I had to put that out there first because they came and visited me and insisted that we want everyone to know that this episode's all about them. You know, so they're like, enough about us. Talk more about us. So that's what it's going to be on. We have our normal guest here today. We have Heather. Hello, I'm Heather. I'm the science officer. I do kooky and crazy experiments, which reminds me. Remember those eggs, Captain? Yeah, the ones that stole the shuttlecraft and took off. Right. Well, apparently after I scramble them, it doesn't... Let me put it this way. The eggs that we got from that planet, they me scrambling them didn't keep them from multiplying. And now we have baby eggs. Yeah, don't let them near the tribbles because I don't want to see what happens if we crossbreed tribbles with eggs. Tribbles and eggs, it sounds like breakfast. I'm sorry to tell you this. Put those suckers in the airlock and blow them out. Good then. It already happened. We need help. You're going to be a, a Dr. Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> Zeus. Dr. Zeus. Zeus is a Greek god. Whatever. Well, same thing. They were related. <laughs> <laughs> It's speaking of interjection, we have there Patrick. Hello, this is Patrick. I'm I'm number one on the ship. I'm the computer guy. And throw those eggs and those triples in the airlock and blow them out now. Yes, sir. Will do. <laughs> I don't need them getting in the computer parts and, and multiplying and frying circuits. And yeah, get them ready. Get rid of them. Will do. No, that explains why one of them was in the replicator and I heard her screaming like R2-D2 is a circuit <laughs> fried. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> gives a good indication. <laughs> and, and, and last but not least, we have our illustrious engineer, Rocky. Oh, yeah. Uh, I do not like green triggles and ham. Sam, I am. No, thank you. Mm. No, no, <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, you should really stay away from green ham anyway. So, you know, that's yeah, if it's green, it's probably a bad idea. It really just depends on what planet you got your food from. I think that's what happened with these eggs. We just got them from the wrong planet. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're on Orion, then, yeah, I mean, green eggs and ham is going to be a, probably a standard. Yeah. But, yeah. You know. <laughs> hey, you know, we got that shuttlecraft back. They, they dinged it up worse than I thought. They, they had the graffiti really? all over the inside. It said the captain likes balls. That's <laughs> what I thought. It's taking me a while to get that off. It's like extra, extra be, in there. Well, your secret's out now, Cap. They had to be. They had to be on the inside because on the outside, I saw a thing that says Wally the Wars was going to a Tupperware party because he was looking for a tight seal. So I was like, <laughs> what the hell is this? So, oh my God, what what a thing that's going on. Well, first off, we're going to talk about, if there's any corrections. I didn't get no email, so. No corrections, but I do want to bring this up real quick. One of our mm -hmm. viewers uh, was talking to me and he's like, so who writes the script to your show? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, who writes your script? I'm like, dude, we just get on here and we start BSing. Like, this is the whole thing is us just BS scene like there's no script where it's just all for improv and he's like oh, wow the only writing we do is when we pick out the news stories and that's because somebody else has already written them we don't we don't write a thing well right? we write the title of the show and i think that's all we write that's about it yeah <laughs> and our note our notes from the episodes but and you the know. notes yeah no i didn't know we were supposed to have a script is that something i should look into well, <laughs> section 31 just came in and said no <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. can't read or write anyway, so. Yes, no. he can. That's you. 
<laughs> so do we have any news this week in Trek? Anybody's got any good stuff? I got something to share, but I'm going to wait the course to the crew goes. So who's got news? Oh, I got I got something. CBS announced that there's going to be three back-to-back Trek Universe panels at the Comic-Con at home on July 23rd. Ooh. And one of them will be a cast table read from the second season finale of Discovery, followed Ooh. by a brief cast Q&A. Shiny. I like uh-huh. that. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, I love their new logo. It's very fancy. We had Heather posing in front of it. It was very nice on Twitter. You can check that out. Um, <laughs> the Star Trek Picard is pushing for some Emmys. They've got uh, several. Uh, if you look on Twitter, or I've got an article here from TrekCore.com. All kinds of video clips for your consideration. You know, all these, all the wonderful work they've done with the show is uh, they deserve amazing it. things. Totally deserve it. Yeah, they deserve it. And as for Heather's Twitter presence um, <laughs> i have to say something you're not in uniform what's up with that <laughs> i was on an away mission you can't expect me to wear my uniform when i'm like down on a planet on an away mission okay well she was incognito no it was my day off <laughs> Okay, all right. I'll get we, don't, we don't get days off in star trek. What are you talking about? I, you guys don't get days off. I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> This is what we have to do. I'm going to leave that one alone. I'm just, I'm just going to leave that one alone. What do you know? An open door. No, come on. It'll be fun. No. You're okay, very special. Yeah, Rocky Heather. did very, it. Rocky very did it. Very special. Keep telling yourself. Special Ed Heather. Special. Well, we haven't heard you ask for where's your baseball, so I guess you're good. <laughs> She's on a short shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> it's yellow. The yellow shuttle. The short yellow shuttle. Yeah. Oh my god, that explains so much. <laughs> the news segment I'm bringing in is that who knows James McAvoy? Who's aware of James McAvoy? Don't know him. Personally. James McAvoy. Uh huh. Yep. He's the guy that played Professor X in X Men. Yep. Professor X, and as well as the wonderful job he did in Split. Um, he's doing Star Trek parodies on his YouTube channel. So if you want a little bit of a laugh and something to enjoy, that's something to look at. So it's going to be pretty cool. Oh, that sounds fun. Is he doing Picard, Pike? Who who is he doing? I'm not going to spoil it. You're going to have to watch. So it's it's pretty funny. And he's doing it at home because everybody right now is bored in the house, in the house bored. So it's going to be fun. Now, since anybody else have any more news? More of a revelation mm-hmm. than news. One of the things popping by on Twitter, somebody was chatting about Darmok and how we have memes and GIFs and our memes are basically like Darmok. You you look at a meme and it means something else. It's like a metaphor you know, or something that's else. That's pretty cool. We communicate in memes and GIFs like Darmok would with senses. You know, that's actually a very different slant on looking at it and they're, and they're not far off the truth there on that. It's totally, you look at it and go, yeah, totally. For sure, dude. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah because everyone has a common experience. That's what makes the GIF work. That's pretty cool. You're more common than the rest of us, so, you know. Of course, I'm the common denominator. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's the captain. He has to be like stoic and, you know, like all the other captains. Somebody's got to say GIF or GIF, and you're you're saying it your way. And we're How do you it. say that? Oh, GIF. Jif. Okay. Gif. I do gif too. Jif. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I really don't okay. care. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, but today is uh, going to be a mark occasion because it's the last Star Trek short we're going to be looking at. Because after this, there's no more shorts left and not until at least put out one. And so we're going to be reviewing the short dot and was it Ephraim? Ephraim and dot. And then we're also going to review Project Daedalus. Now, Ephraim and Dot is about the tardigrade and a supposed little robot that was on the Enterprise. And Project Daedalus was all about discovery infiltrating Section 31's headquarters and suspicions that they think they have a traitor on board their ship. And Burnham tries to help Spock, but hey, sibling rivalry. Well, what did you guys think about Ephraim and Dot? I think that was a really cute cartoon. I loved it. It was awesome. I I, I got I watched it this morning because we record on Saturday mornings and it's a cartoon. You 
got to have cartoons on Saturday mornings. That's the way I grew up, you know, watching Bugs Bunny and, and the Roadrunner and Coyote. Wait, wait. And, yes. Did you watch it while eating cereal? Yes. Yes, I did. Oh I my had my God. Cheerios while watching. That's the special way. You did a retro Saturday morning. It was so <laughs> friggin' cool. I loved it so well, much. My question is, when it was done, did you clap your hands together and go, again? <laughs> the no, first I- time I saw it, I did. That's for sure. It was so much fun <laughs> watching it. It was like a roller coaster ride. It's like, I want to go again. And you got to, you really have to pay attention because, I mean, there are so many Easter eggs in this. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. it starts out with Space Seed and then goes to Trouble with Tribbles. Then it goes to Naked Time. Who Warns Adonis? So they were different episodes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I so, wasn't yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was like, did all this happen in one episode? Because you had Khan? No, no, the Tardigrade, he was going through time. So he um, did the Space Seed. He did Trouble with Tribbles. He did Naked Time. Who Warns Adonis? Doomsday Machine. The Tholian Web. And then Savage Curtain. But And then we got into the movies, too. Yeah, it spanned yeah. anywhere from 19 to 27 years. It started in like 2266 and ended in approximately 2285 or with the destruction of the Enterprise. And they even said something about, um, what was the one coming home or whatever? Voyage Home. Voyage Home, yeah. There was a reference to that as well. So, I mean, it was just like, it started out in Discovery, but then it ended up in TOS. So it was really kind of lots and lots of fun stuff in there. Does that mean Dot was going through space time too because Dot was following Efren? Yep. It, it wow. looks like what happened is that their their timeline or how they did things, the jump between them was really interesting. Because like Patrick said, it started off with a, like an old school education film. The way they had it, like you would sit in the classrooms, like, make sure you watch the blood. <laughs> <laughs> the that black and thing. white. Yeah, right. I'm the like, black and white thing. <laughs> did they even they know about tardigrades back then? <laughs> You know, but then once you get on the Enterprise, like he said, he jumped all around. It was kind of like watching Dot and Ephraim go at it was like watching a Bugs Bunny episode. Right. That, yeah. I kept thinking it was it was total Looney Tunes cartoons, um, you know, violence. And yeah. watch it again for just the music, because the music goes through all these little changes. And right when they're in that battle sequence mode, it's the battle music from Star Trek. I mean, it was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. You know, it is just. So it's pretty cool the way they go through the whole thing with the they were with like basically dot was there from the beginning of the five-year voyage through the refit through the movies and everything else and then they become cuddle buddies oh yeah dot became a surrogate father even though he didn't want to be <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. And all the yeah. little children. Yeah, it was real touching. Dot saved the day. Yeah, he saved all the babies. With one arm. Period. And that was so cute. He opens up his little trap door and all these babies come out. And all she's like, baby tardigrades. Aw, you're the father. I'm keeping you now. And she hugs him and she doesn't let go. And Dot's and he's like, like, help. Shit. help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dot's exactly. like, shit. <laughs> like, oh, no. He's like, bitch. He's like, bitch, let me go. <laughs> Wait, who who retooled their communicator to sound like an old South Earth ring? Oh that was God. me. Sorry. <laughs> it so sounded like it why do why do computer people always want to go retro with sound effects on things? It's the nostalgia. Oh yeah, okay, you got a point. Yeah, you got a point on that. I put mine on vibrate, but that's me. <laughs> Is that why the batteries yeah, but, died? But, but you're <laughs> but you're sitting on yours, Rocky. So that's the that's the whole. I like to keep it in the back pocket. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that, that explains why you keep winking and telling me to call you. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. Now I know. In this episode, um, I never, ever thought rows and rows of sharp teeth would be so cute when they're falling down the Jeffrey tube and everything. And like the little Ephron is screaming and it's like, oh, my God, you look so scary and so adorable at the same time. That was cute. The way the little rolls thing that that was. Hmm. And then Dot closes the door on uh, Ephron and does the live long and prosper. That was funny. <laughs> that, was- that was funny. I was not expecting that. That was one of those, those funny things. Just like, oh, they just said live long and prosper in the middle of all this. That's cute. <laughs> yeah. And then um, one more thing I want to bring up is when the uh, ship at the very end explodes. 
two things. One, what movie or sh- uh, TV show is that from? And two, there's no fire in space. That always bugs me. <laughs> that was well, the search yeah, for Spock. Star Trek three, Star Trek three, the search for Spock. It's when they lost the enterprise. And in, in, in that okay. it was a big sequence. Yeah. Yep. If you haven't yeah. seen yep. Star Trek three in a while, it's actually worth watching. It's not a bad film. It's just, you know, if you, you grew up and you saw Star Trek two and you just completely, your heart was torn out by Star Trek two and Star Trek three, you just kind of, it hurts to watch it. But after a while, it's actually not a bad flick. And, you know, Christopher Lloyd is a Klingon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, totally. Doc is a Klingon. Yeah. <laughs> and just like uh, Patrick was saying, so one of the episodes was the uh, Tribbles episode. So when I think it was Dot opens up the hatch, all the Tribbles come out. Mm-hmm. And when that happened, I'm like, oh, look, they found Fred's lab. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool there's a nice nod to fred because <laughs> lord knows he had the triples everywhere mm-hmm. everywhere and we, a, and we get a chance to hear um if you watch the movie that rocky was just talking about you get a chance to see kirk says one of his famous lines which is i have had enough of you and kicks him in the face <laughs> that was the movie not the not the episode is that what happened to you yeah, it was it was good <laughs> yeah, was, the only thing bad about star trek 3 honestly was the recasting of savik yeah oh from yeah, from you, christy alley was the first one from christy alley to robin curtis other than that and then she didn't do a bad job she didn't do mm-hmm. a horrible job she was she was really good at savik i mean the character was played well but you really you know you know you got your heart set on christy alley at that time it's like oh wow man but you know she also her logically she did decided it would be beneficial to her and Spock to give into his pond four when he was growing up on the planet. Well, you if know, you remember that poor kid was in need. Yeah. Now, wasn't there like some kind of a uh, big tough or some kind of fight with Christy Alley? No, no. Oh, um, so I'm remembering that wrong. Okay. No, there wasn't. It just her stood there. And, um, and what really got Kirk going is the fact that what was, what was uh, Christopher Lloyd's character's name? In, in that where he shot Kirk's son. Yeah. Kang? He killed Kirk's son. No, wasn't Kang. Kang. Or no, wasn't or Kang. It's something. Kong. It's been a while. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Alexa, who did Christopher Lloyd play in Star Trek 3? Christopher Lloyd plays Commander Kruger in the 1984 film Star Trek 3, The Search for Spock. Oh, well, there you go. But at any rate, he kills, he kills Kirk's son. Yeah. Which was, was, which was supposed to be a more touching moment. But in my opinion, that's the only kind of flaw. They didn't make him endearing enough that you cared a lot. The fact that he was killed. Yeah, yeah. The, the relationship between him and his father just wasn't there. So you're like, mm-hmm. oh, it's just this other guy. And you're like, that sucks, but we don't know him, you know? Well, let's, since we segued into a, a movie from the short, <laughs> let's get back into Project Daedalus, which was a really good episode. And who recalls what who Daedalus was in Greek mythology? Don't remember. Your mom? Um, nope, wasn't he? Well, my mom, you could say in a way because she crafted me. So um, Daedalus <laughs> was a craftsman in, in Greek mythology who had two sons, which was uh, Icarus and Lap- Lapis. Uh, Lapius? Uh, I don't know. But that sounds dirty. He, yeah, but he was also the creator of the labyrinth, which was yeah. a huge maze underneath the King Midas of Crete. Where there was a minotaur that supposedly lived down there. So I thought Project Data was interesting because one, they had to go through a maze of mines mm-hmm. in order to get to Section 31. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and Arian was dogging them left and right, although she didn't quite... 100% know that she was doing it. I mean, she was like, yeah, she had an idea, um, yeah, which is why she told, she told Tilly um, to stay there. Yeah. Yeah. But Tilly once again, didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tilly didn't know what was going on. So she, she's like, Oh, I'm watching. Oh, I'm, Oh, you're gonna put me over here. I'm going to go over here. Tilly's like in that realm where you, well, you, I got to do what you say. So I'm going to go over here now. Yeah. She's only an ensign, right? I yeah. Mean, come on. So, yeah, well still, you know, she's like, whatever you do, don't leave. All right. I won't leave. Okay. (laughs) Well, it was fun to see the relationship between Tilly, Ariam, and all the other crew members, Nan and everything. It's Yeah, that was nice. It 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 really was, and I wish they would have showed it before this. I wish they wouldn't have just put this all in one episode because it feels very I don't know the word for it, but I feel sort of gypped because I feel like I just got to know this character and I really like this character and I'm knowing the background of the character, and then they're gonna take her away from me like that's horrible. It, it sucks because uh, you build up such a cool 
cool fucking character. I mean, she can literally set her memories aside to make space for other things. Mm -hmm. That's just wild and crazy and uh, an amazing story of this poor woman that, uh, you know, was, you know, robotics has saved her life and enabled her to do other amazing things. However, it's also the downfall of, of well, it could have been everybody, all, mm -hmm. all living things, but it was fortunately just her getting thrown out the airlock. She's jokey too. She's like, Tilly's like, you getting rid of memories. Like, yeah, yours is the first to go. Like, <laughs> just, the great sense of humor. It was just awesome. Yeah. And then when uh, Tilly called her a robot, she's like, I'm not a robot. I'm cyberly augmented. There's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> and Detmer's all over that too, because she's got augmentations too. So. Hmm. Well, what was it? Narn? Was it Narn? The one with the I breathing apple? Right? Mm -hmm. I think it's Nan. N a h n. Nan. Yeah, Nan. Yeah. Yeah. She was like, she's like, thumbs up with you, chick. I, mm -hmm. I'm watching you. I got my eye on you because she's like, mm, and that's what security you, you, does. Yeah, it's a sign yeah. of a good security officer. She was yeah, on like, it. She knew it. Like, she just came on it just a bit late, but she was on it. Yeah. Said, you you acted a little strange there, girl. You in danger, girl. She's so <laughs> quick and everything. Ariam's like, so those help you breathe. And she's like, why are you asking? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to answer. Why are you asking? No, see, Nan did Karen the right way. She just watched and observed. <laughs> Too, there was a reason to do something. You know. Wait a minute. There's a way to do a care in the right way. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So she did it the correct way. It's okay. like, you look suspicious, but I'm going to watch and not say nothing until you prove my point. <laughs> <laughs> Now, yeah. did you guys see how difficult it is to try to trip up a Vulcan? Mm. Cornwell was trying her best to make Spock stumble over himself, and he was just like, I'm not having it. Nope. Pass that lie detector test without flinching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he wasn't <clears throat> lying. Nope. Nope. You know, and she's like, well, when did you kill them? I didn't kill him. Well, did you use the Vulcan martial arts to kill him? I didn't kill him. <laughs> right. You know, I was like, like, I used a Vulcan nerve pinch. I didn't kill them. <laughs> He's like, look, bitch, I told you once. I'm not going to tell you again. Yeah, you're not listening to the words I am saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> it's like and that then, old joke. Have you stopped beating your crew member yet? <laughs> <laughs> and then she tells Pike, you know, he thinks he's telling the truth, but I got evidence. And then she shows him the video of like Spock killing these people. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, deep fake, deep fake. It's a deep fake. Yeah. Right. Real deep fake. <laughs> sure was. <laughs> and who, who would have thought a deep fake would survive from the 21st century? all the way you know that's how we got yeah. holograms yeah mm -hmm. but crazy Saru to the rescue always with his super superior vision I'm sure he probably spotted something off in the transmission and that's why he did the heat scan yep and then that's that see that's good when you get somebody who's really observationist that's that was excellent but let's talk about how much also Spock was still butthurt by what was going on with Michael and him I mean some of those quips they gave by hurt my feelings <laughs> I'm not related yeah yeah, she's my like, sister, wow. not by blood. I'm like, damn. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a brother sister thing. I mean, Big it's time. like, I love that they put that relationship in there. And it wasn't just a flat type of relationship. They actually were going at each other. That's a brother sister relationship. Yeah, and when and she's actually trying to, you know, trying to help and try to be useful. And, and he's like, I'm playing a game of chess with you now. Well, I'm going to fuck with her because I'm going to mess with her now because I don't want to be playing a stupid game of chess. <laughs> and then when I candid the, te the chess board, too, is like, wow, dude. Yeah, his out, his outburst was like like what okay well only a sister can drive a brother that crazy that's right. like god <laughs> damn it girl and he's like i want to feel emotions yeah Whack. <laughs> you want to see angry you're making me angry ah yeah that's that's a that's a thing a sister does to a brother yeah you wouldn't like me when i'm angry and then <laughs> to get called by the captain when she looks like she's getting ready to cry because it was so upsetting then she's got to pull herself together and go to the bridge i was mm -hmm. like wow yeah that was just rough that's more realistic to life though than some of the earlier star trek episodes where everything just happens so perfectly and it's like no mm. it doesn't work out that perfect you have to go you have to do a job and you're not feeling up to it or you're crying or you're in the middle of something and like that's more realistic well you got a really good point on that that's i think why season two started to shine more but we talked about how the crew starts to feel more like a family like they're clicking but mm -hmm. families click other ways too so we're seeing that yeah for sure 
Now, when Ariam was downloading the stuff from the sphere, was that so she was downloading the information from the sphere, not the angry butt plug? Well, tentacles. the angry no. butt plug was has the same copy of the information, but it was from the future. But the angry the butt sphere plug was, was from like millions of years or not millions, thousands of years ago or whatever. And the, so but it's all the same artificial intelligence trying to work together. You know, but here's what I'm trying to say. So the spear gave them this information and then the angry butt plug with tentacles came and tried to download that information but he couldn't do it so then Ariam and then it was transferred to her so Ariam took over the job so then she downloaded the information so they still got the information so it's the butt plug with tentacles still trying to do his job but she she was only able to transfer 25% over to control so no she transferred sh- all 100 when she no. went on the away mission didn't she no, no. nope only no, got 25% yeah. before yeah. she yeah. got blown before, yeah before they blew, before non blew her out into cold oblivion she got stuck. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So that was definitely because Section 31, we decided it became sentient and decided that it wanted to do things on its own. That's why Cornwell was there, because they wanted to be able to input commands directly into control and control wasn't obeying them anymore. And then we saw why, because she basically well, killed everybody there. Because Petard was dead and everyone yep. else there were, you know, it was just a hologram. So who killed everyone? Control. 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 Yeah. Janet Jackson. Oh, so it was yeah. like a... Um, um, oh, I'm totally blanking. What's the name? The 2000, the movie 2000, where it's like, like Hal? yes, Dave. Hal, yes, yeah. Hal, Hal. That's what I'm trying to think of. So yeah, it was like Hal. Hal, Hal basically opened a, uh, one of the airlocks and froze everyone to death. Basically, Dang. that's that's what they. That's well, what after he unplugged happened. everyone's life support and all that, but anyway, yeah, control is just vicious. I mean, you, you kill everybody, then you start impersonating. It. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. take a, and then take their place, and then start manipulating stuff. It's just, and then we're gonna turn off connections to Cornwell because we know she's trouble. Very mani- manipulative. Yeah, but that's what happens when you get into a society with this blind obedience without questioning an order, and that's what I thought was pretty cool because Cornwell actually gave Pike his kudos that way where he's where she told him was like you didn't want me in the wars like because of this is yeah we wanted the best of us to survive and pike was like oh shucks man i was getting ready to yell and scream yeah that was a moment <laughs> yeah. he was really like oh 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 yeah. okay he got his pie served to him he was like oh humble okay sorry my bad <laughs> big time now right before that when they're walking onto the bridge wouldn't it be nice if like you're walking onto the bridge and you don't know where you're going you don't know what you're doing and all of a sudden the first thing someone says is oh hey we found the coordinates to something weird and this is what's going on oh we found the coordinates like but that doesn't happen in life you know you don't just no when have you ever like okay i don't know where i'm going i don't know what i'm doing but as soon as i walk in the room someone's gonna tell me where to go and what to do and i'll know and i'll be able to go like what am i going on a rant i'm going on a rant aren't i (laughs) no (laughs) it doesn't always happen sometimes it happens no i was going through my brain housing group okay to go with background experience let's say in the service i'm expecting a new personnel to come in and I know what their job's going to be when they get there. And so I'm sitting doing my stuff and a person walks in and goes, okay, good morning, corporal. You need to go to the station. You need to do this because this is set. Go do it. You know, we'll go with the pleasantries after this. We're on a mission. So that I can see. Oh, so it's a more of a military thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that I can see because once you come in and everybody's got to do a certain job, everyone's got a job to do. So yeah, I think that can happen. Okay. Cornwall has a court and she's like, we've got to go to control this is where control is we got to go there so you guys got to take me here and it's got to be secret because control can't find out you're the one ship that control doesn't know where you are so we got to go and they're like we're trying to solve this mystery the mystery is where is this going all where is it all leading to well it just happens to be leading to control so they're just both going to the same place at the same time yeah in control oh my god i mean that's a danny jackson baby (laughs) that's the big fear i think everybody when it comes to ai that ai will discover when it gets sentient enough that humans are basically a virus on the face of the planet and decide to get rid of it. And it always and, comes down to the red eye android. Yeah. Just watch out for whoever's got the red eyes. If you got red eyes glowing, run the other way. They're coming to kill you. That's just basically yep. it. Red eyes are evil. At least it's not the brown eyed android. And as long as they don't discover Visine, then we'll, they'll take us by surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Robots wouldn't be using Visine. Hello. 
You never know. They can no. discover color contacts. No. <laughs> then they'll have green eyes, and that's the same problem I have with cats seen in the dark. And they look at you at nighttime, and there's these green eyes looking at you. Uh, you know, that, yeah, that would be <laughs> freaky. I don't think I would like that. So that would be bizarre. But, you know, the, the thing that I thought was cool for the way they had the subtle, again, production value on Discovery this season was just as high as the first one. Phenomenal. Yeah, but did you notice that when Michael and Spock was playing chess, they had a heartbeat going? No, I didn't notice. Where they were, I know you might have missed it. It was very subtle. If you watch the scene again, when Michael and her, they were playing the three-dimensional chess, you could hear a low heartbeat, which kind of clued up with what Spock was going through. I think the air conditioning in my in my uh, cabin was was uh, on too high, so I I, miss, I didn't hear that. Oh, it was it subtle like that? That I, yeah, I yeah. have to watch that again because I, I didn't it notice was that very either. Subtle. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it was very subtle, but you you hear that, you know. And again, the mental going back and forth, like you said earlier, Rocky. It was all a matter of what brother and sister fighting. But you got to look at what Spock is telling Michael too. Like you know, you have this savior complex, and you think that you know everything is your responsibility when it's not. You can't take on all of these you can't shoulder all of this guilt for things that you could have done or could not have done it's not all on you and he's kind of right because yeah. who's the red angel? It's Burnham. Yeah. Yeah. It, she's she's taking so much responsibility for everything. She has to go back in time to mess with stuff. I mean, that's <laughs> that, that, he's exactly right. And that's uh, that will piss off any Vulcan, right? She got that from her mom, though. Exactly right. It <laughs> runs in the family. <laughs> that wasn't on his side of the uh, uh, you know it wasn't his blood of the family. That's for sure. Right. But how many how many people you know? or if not yourself, that when something goes wrong, you automatically feel that somehow it's your fault. Oh, me always. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that like at work when I'm, when I'm doing, you know, computer stuff, if my boss comes to me and says something, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm like, I immediately feel like it's my fault that I'm being attacked for something that, you know, that I didn't even do. Yeah. That's just so me. that's, that's, that's Michael. So you would have been Michael. Yeah. If that was his situation, you would try to control things that even though it might've been out of your control. I would have been Stamets because Stamets was working on the spore drive equipment and he's talking to us like, come on, baby, you got to work for me. Let's figure out what's wrong with you. Are you wrong? No, you're wrong. You're, you no, know, is yeah. it this one? No, it's not you. Okay. Uh, come on. Let's figure it. You know, he's talking to a piece of equipment and I do that sometimes too. And Spock says, you know, inanimate objects don't respond. Hello. He's like, <laughs> Don't listen to him. <laughs> Don't listen to him, baby. He's, you're, like, you're, you're okay. We're going to find out what's wrong with you. Could you guys think louder? <laughs> yeah. Right. And Stannis was like, I didn't know you knew electrical with Spock. And Spock's like, I have many talents. And I'm like, ooh, mm. ooh la la, inside and outside of the bedroom. But, <laughs> so we went from engineering to his bedroom? Yes, but that's because we're on the show. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> engineering goes in many places. Dude, mm. we take everything to the bedroom here it all, the It all gets dirty at some point. It all gets dirty. It's all sexual. Okay. Now, I thought it was interesting when they were talking about Stannis and Hugh and how Hugh moved out and they were talking. You know, Stannis was really upset about it. I thought it was profound that they said, Perhaps he needs distance from you, not because he is no longer having feelings for you, but because he no longer knows how to feel about himself. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's seriously profound. That was yeah. very deep. That third person emotional aspect to things, especially about their relationship. Now he's getting it from his side, too. Hugh was getting it last week from the Klingon the, or the ex-Klingon. Now, uh, the other side of the relationship is getting it from the half Vulcan. It's fascinating. It really is because it made him pause to think because like a lot of people, when something goes wrong, you automatically bring yourself for it. You don't stop to think that it, it could be the other person, you know? Well, yeah. Stamets thinks that, you know, he either he's not doing something right or he's doing too much. And that's why Culber doesn't want to, you know, be around anymore. He's like, he's taking that responsibility on himself when it has really nothing to do with him. I mean, yeah, he could be a little less, um, you know, grabby, touchy, feely coming you know, let's we're you're back and we're going to live our life as we did before. But, you know, well, you know, he was looking forward to that, uh, that makeup sex. Yeah, that long time no see. That come back to life sex. Yeah. <laughs> right? And it's the first time when somebody says, no, it's not you, it's me. They actually meant it. <laughs> 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 
you know. But yeah, <sighs> that they didn't have the makeup. I haven't seen you in a long time booty thing. So yeah, that, that, I could understand that. You know, it's like I got my bed partner back and you don't want to be with me. Nah. So yeah. that's what Stamis was going through with you. Like, oh, but did you notice that a surefire way of getting rid of all your pesky aliens ever since the movie Alien is the airlock? It solves so many problems. <laughs> the airlock is wonderful. <laughs> It's like the universal translator. It just, it solves all your problems. The universal kill device. (laughs) Problem is real airlocks don't move that fast. I have no idea. Okay. I've never, well, every time I've watched the NASA's coverage of space stations, airlocks are like the slowest thing in the world. They got to pressurize it. They got to wait. They got to make sure it's all lined up correctly. Then they open one side. Then they open the other side. Oh, you're talking, you're talking about those old videos. Yeah. Airlocks in real life are never like in the movies. In the movies, we pop the doors open and everything rushes out real quick. Yeah. You know, that's, it's never like that in reality. But the airlocks that you're watching are from the videos from 2000. 2020 like hundreds of years ago so it's old of course they move slow oh you're saying we have faster airlocks in the, we, the future we advance mm-hmm. see we had to kill more aliens okay. okay to add my two cents the reason why they're slower and this is a concept that i think that it is and please for those of you listening you know, please add your two cents send the email if you think i'm wrong with supporting information and i will gladly say that i was wrong and say you were right but i'm thinking that the reason why it's like that is because when you have an airlock they have they cycled so you have one section which the person could come inside then they close that door then they get to turn around and pump air into it and then they open the door in order for them to get to the inside but when you have things like star trek where you there's a force field there's separation is instantaneous they can just have the force field here and the force field there when they open up the other door there was no cycling immediately all the air rushed out now for the violent suction of air I had no idea. That was invented by a really kinky uh, scientist. (laughs) <laughs> That's probably what happened. The kinky scientist did it. Well, the vacuum just wasn't working for him. So he tried to create something better. Uh, a quicker suck. A quicker suction. But imagine, the, I guess, if you wanted to do uh, um, to heighten the expectation. Imagine, okay, I'm opening the airlock and in about five minutes, you're going to get sucked out. Oh, look, some of the air is leaving now. Aren't you scared yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's the asphyxiation side of things and at, at the same time as the suction, right? Mm-hmm. I'm feeling a little faint, but other than that, I'm okay. (laughs) (laughs) Like, seriously, come on, aren't you dead yet? (laughs) Still got a little air left. (laughs) It only gets scary when a person is thrown out into space because that's when their uh, blood starts boiling, right? When the what? The blood starts boiling. Like, that's how you die in outer space is your blood boils, right? Like all the air. Doesn't it freeze? Well, I thought all the air was like taken out of your body and it made like the the blood boil or something. Okay. Are we looking? Well, yeah, it's, I mean, it's combinations is, of things, but I, I space is remember cold, right. it's so. not, it's not the cold that gets you. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't help. No, I know space is cold, but it was something with like the oxygen leaving your, your blood. Yeah. It goes out too quick and, and, uh, and you like and you basically burst then, from the inside. Yeah, no, you, it's you all, burst. It's you, like you, your body burst or something. We need well, an actual hmm. medical professional to give us an opinion of, of what right? actually Let's, happens. We need to get Dr. Culber on here and, and ask him. There you go. You no, know, the, the, well, the first thing that would happen if you're in space is what we stated earlier is the lack of air. You wouldn't lose consciousness right off the bat. It would take a while, um, usually about 15, 20 seconds before your body uses up the oxygen in your bloodstream. And then you could survive with almost two minutes. I think the Marvel movie, they showed that perfectly when they had with... Um, what was the name of the movie? Hold on. Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm. And they show what happened when he was out in space out there. And you're right. Also there, if you don't hold your breath, the loss of external pressure would cause the gas inside your lungs to expand, which would rupture your lungs. Mm. Okay. And then it says the vacuum of space pulls the air from your body. So if there's air left in your lungs, they will rupture and the oxygen in the rest of your body ex- will expand. You blow up twice your normal size, but you don't explode because your skin is elastic enough to hold you together. That's correct. And any exposed liquid on your body begins to vaporize. So the surfaces of your tongue and your eyes will boil. 
Yes, yeah, so I was right about the boil. Well, not the blood, though. Without air oh, in your lungs, your blood stops sending blood. oxygen to the brain. You pass out after about 15 seconds. 90 seconds after exposure, you die from asphyxiation. And it's also very cold in space, so eventually you freeze solid. Yeah, so it was None like of a- this sounds sexy at all, except for maybe no. the solid part at the end. But then you're like super cold. So, it, yeah, no, it doesn't work for me. Yeah. I wonder how being a uh, cyborg would make it different. Well, your parts, your parts would still freeze. I mean, you know, you know, her organic is her brain because her brain was also organic as well as cyborg. So the organic part probably would have gone. That's why she said she wasn't going to have her helmet on. Mm, okay. Yeah, because she wanted to make sure that she died. Yeah. The ending of this episode is just the. Mm-hmm. the that, that was sad. It was it so was emotional so the way they cut it together, the editing of it, because you if you watch it, you're seeing reaction shots and the reaction shots, you know, the, the, that's amazing to watch everyone react to this it's so well acted and really emotional but it's also the pacing and the order of which you see the reactions because it also reveals not only did you know everybody you see what has happened several times over before you actually even see arium out then you see arium experience the last memory that tilly sent the favorite memory and Mm -hmm. now i'm completely in tears and dying (laughs) and and then you see the the reveal of what actually happened you had non hitting the airlock switch so you, you see the story played out and then and they show you this is actually what happened, but you're seeing it happen as they're showing you what happened without t- telling you what happened. And well, then you, they reveal it at the end. And you're, I'm an emotional mess at the same time because of the sequence. So I, I just love the way they edited the ending of this episode. Well, you know that Michael didn't do it because the look on Michael's face was one of pure she shock couldn't. when. Yeah, yeah she couldn't it was do it. Absolute pure shock when when um, Arium is blown out into space. So, I mean, no. you don't know who did it at that moment, but you can just tell by the Michael's reaction that it wasn't her. But it goes back to what Spock said about her is she feels that she's got to save everybody. And despite the danger, she's still trying to save Arium. And she can't. She's trapped on the no. other side of that door. That, that, that Yeah, you can't. I mean, it's like literally into Star Trek Two, Wrath of Khan. You're looking at Kirk. Can't do anything about Spock. Spock's basically already dead because he's in the radiation chamber and he's radiated but he's still through the the glass you can see and but you can't do anything about it so you can't do anything but watch and that's basically what Vernon was stuck with I also love when they're just a little bit before all of that when they're battling it out when you're having this massive like Terminator you know girl on girl action it was amazing the the battle sequence they had but the second they get behind the door the door shuts behind and she's staring at her through the door through the window it reminded me of the scene in the, the other galaxy Star Wars the Phantom Menace where they're battling and the force field turns on and you know you're looking at Darth Maul and you can't do anything about it but sneer at him through the through the force field same kind of feeling it's a feeling of helplessness how dare you bring up Star Wars no, I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> but it was so the cool feeling the whole feeling of helplessness because you get people and I think that's a lot of, of, of fear that someone has they feel that they can control every aspect of their life Kirk felt that he didn't believe in a no-win scenario he believed that no matter what you can find a way out of it and with Spock dying that was a hit to his paradigm that is not everything he can control Spock died and it's the same thing with Burnham was beginning to realize she couldn't save Arium even though she wanted to she couldn't do it and the security officer is like bitch you ripped off my face breather you're gone he's so (laughs) Mm -hmm. blasted her out into space (laughs) she was over it I really like Non. The final thing, which I thought was really tear jerking, is that, like you said, uh, Rocky, about the memory she was replaying about being on the beach, um, was the final phrase before it went to black was you heard her say coming home. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in tears. I was actually in tears when I yeah. saw this. I, 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 they got me the first time I saw it. And the second time I was bawling like a little girl. I mean, it happens. No, it was it was a really good episode. I mean, we had horror because you had an empty base with floating, frozen blood. Say that three times real fast. Floating, frozen blood, frozen blood, floating, frozen blood. That was cool when they got through that. It was like, because this is not your standard Star Trek. You know, when you beam into some place, it's not usually you beaming into a base that's, you know, the gravity's off and dead bodies are floating and then yeah yeah it's never like that so it's like oh my god this is the star trek we don't normally see seriously it was resident evil star trek yeah 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 Yeah. and then when he put the life support back on um i for a split second thought they was going to play the music let the bodies hit the floor let the bodies (laughs) hit the floor 
That would have been an awesome music choice. <laughs> at, at least, at least I'm glad that they let some of the bodies shatter. Because if they hadn't, yes. I would have been really um, disappointed. Oh, and what about the yeah. body that got cut off by the uh, the door shutting? You can see that no. one that was split in I half. Know. Just Ooh. amazing work they did on that stuff. Loved it. Ooh. But I would have also preferred to see the body slowly start to melt because then they put life support <laughs> back on. They took their helmets off, so it got warmed up pretty damn quick. Yeah. Yeah you know, for them to remove their helmet because you figured if it was cold enough to freeze the body, turn on gravity shouldn't instantly heat the inside up, but hey, it, it's trick. There should be at least some puddles. Yeah, but well, yeah. The, I mean, they, they weren't in there that long. I mean, they, and those bodies were frozen solid. I mean, it was two weeks of, you know, being in, in, in space atmosphere. So I think it's going to take longer than a couple of minutes for them to start to, to melt. I agree. But the blood particles. It, it was kind of quick, though. It was like, oh, OK, we turn on the atmosphere. Let me turn off my helmet. OK. It's like, wait a minute. We just you know, I mean, I, we, I'm talking about how slow the airlock doors move. Can we really re atmo the atmosphere inside a space station that quickly? I, I guess we can in the future. See it. I would have loved to see Nam when she said that, okay, life support's back on. She takes a helmet off. She goes, fuck, it's cold. And then puts it back <laughs> exactly. on. Right? I mean, because that's reality right there. And you'd see, you'd see their breath in the air, right? Because it's so cold. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like, oh, Jesus, it's cold in here. It's, or it smells bad or something. Like, give us what the atmosphere is doing. It's like, oh, my God. And have Arium look at her and raise an eyebrow. And goes, what, too soon? <laughs> Like, oh, my God, it was such a it was such a cool episode. You had a lot of things going on with it and you, the dangers of letting Siri run crazy. Yes, <laughs> they turn into hell. Siri turns yeah. into hell. The, the evils of AI, especially when it's trying to kill you. Or buy your shopping, buy your groceries. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's trying to buy your groceries. It's well, yeah. <laughs> it's evil when it buys your groceries when you don't want it to or if it gets you something you don't want. OK, anyway. Well, well usually it's the humans supplementing. <laughs> They're like, oh, we don't have this brand. Let's give you that brand. You're like, I never buy that brand. I hate that brand. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Yeah, because if you want, I didn't want that one. I wanted GIF, not GIF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, I wanted an image. And they gave me peanut butter. What the fuck? He's like, what the hell? I don't want that. It's like, seriously. That's when you need the universal translator to work properly. Like, I wanted Patrick Stewart in my quarters, not Patrick Hall. <laughs> 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 Yeah, well, I didn't want to be in your quarters either, so there you go. <laughs> this was an enjoyable. Now, for next week, we don't have any shorts. So unless somebody has a short or, or a YouTube video they want to promote. Well, if you don't have any week. shorts, then you need to go to the store and buy some uh, or uh, replicate commando. some. I, I just go, you know, buck naked. It's okay. Yeah, there you go. Skinny dipping. <laughs> or a robe. Do you have any any shorts that you think we should watch for next week there, Heather? Anything in uh, your... Not off the top of my head. Did you guys already do Children of Mars? Yeah, yep. that was the first one we did. Okay. It shows you how much you listen to us on the subspace channel. Oh. I thought we mentioned revisiting that one possibly. Were we going to revisit any of them? We could revisit Children of Mars if you guys want to, because it was a it was a good one and it set up Picard really well. And it also ties in from behind the scene what we know of AI, what really happened. But that's up to you guys. I'm actually going to let this be a crew decision on that one. I'm good with that. Rocky? I got nothing else going on. Pat? Sure, why not? Okay, so next week we're going to do Children of Mars, but also the episode we're going to be watching next week, because everybody knows after nine comes ten, we're going to be doing season two, episode ten, The Red Angel. Bum, bum, it's going to be when Berman is stunned when she learns that she has ties to Section 31 runs deeper than she could ever have thought. And then we have Discovery goes to work on its most critical mission up to that date, okay? And it's going to be originally aired on March 21st, 2019. You can watch Watch it on YouTube for ninety nine. You have a penny and also Google Play as well as Voodoo all for $1.99 if you don't have CBS All Access. And if you don't have it, well, just tune in anyway. We'll we'll run down the show for you. So, yeah, we'll, we'll give you all the important parts. Yeah, we'll skip around a little bit. Um, most part, we try to stay <laughs> in sequence. We might even this talk episode. about a movie. <laughs> yeah. Or this Star episode. Wars. There's Star Wars. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, speaking of which, well, you know what the Jawa said when he went into a strip bar, right? Jabba Jabba? What, what did the Jabba yeah. say when he, when he went to the strip bar? Oh, titty. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So another take on that. I got it. <laughs> 
And of course, we can't leave the episode without a bad joke. And you know, Patrick has no idea what that is. So you notice he didn't chime in. I was emailing our guests for next week, so I wasn't oh. paying attention. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. Go and be responsible <laughs> yeah, and do uh, work. This, this yeah. You really, <laughs> he can't even appreciate Seriously. a titty joke because he's busy doing work. Oh, my God. I am the number one on the ship. I mean, I've got, you know, I, I do have responsibilities. I'm sure we could throw in like a, uh, a butt plug with, you know, tentacles joke in there, too, for Patrick. He would like that. Just no. make yeah. sure that he uses the tentacles, walk to his cabin and knock on her door. He would be ever so happy with that. Um, I remember. Well, no. I saw the butt plug walking down the hallway, so I think he's headed that way. There you go, well, Patrick. I won't be in my cabin, so. You could sing Rod Stewart. Tonight's the night. <laughs> Don't worry. He got All the right. message that he's me and you in the holodeck. <laughs> I, if I was doing Rod Stewart, I'd be singing Maggie Mae. <laughs> oh, you're going to wake up and okay, that's it. We're going to go down a tangent real fast. We're sliding. I feel the slope <laughs> slipping. We're going to get ready to get out of here. Um, thanks everyone for joining us again. Um, please be safe out there uh, with that coronavirus thing happening at this timeline. Wash your hands for 20 seconds. You can sing happy birthday to yourself twice. That would usually run 20 seconds. Wear a mask. If you don't believe in wearing a mask, at least put on a face shield. Just because yeah. you are coming confident in your ability that you can't catch it doesn't mean that you don't have the virus and you can't give it to someone whose immune system isn't as strong. And right. the last thing I want is any of our listening family talk about, I just found out I gave my friend coronavirus and it killed his Grammy. So don't let that happen. Mm -hmm. So for all of you out there, continue to not only have a great week, but make it so. Starfleet Underground, beaming in to a podcast feed near you. Lock on to our website at starfleetunderground.com and send your comments and questions to the collective at starfleetunderground.com. Follow us on Twitter at Starfleet Under G and on Facebook and Instagram, we're Starfleet Underground.